Alexa, find me an antique. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. Well, we're going to go explore the rest of this really interesting, different kind of antique mall. There's a whole back room that I haven't seen before. There's a bunch of stuff upstairs, including actual vehicles for sale. This place is quite big and a little different than your usual antique mall. So let's go look. Okay, I've never been in this part of this store before. I've only been in here once and it was near the end of the day. I didn't have much time to stop and I only saw a little bit of the front and the upstairs. So this is looking encouraging. Dolly's first aid. The chipmunks, yes, it's been old enough for that version of the chipmunks to be collectible too now. I like the NASA mask in the back, that could be good. Here is some sound advice. A good Stroh's neon in the back and the Pabst is good too. Actually there's a lot of good beer signs in here that are lit. They are not easy to get to. That tells me that they're probably priced up there because they might not be so crowded in here if not, but maybe it's just because they have a lot of stuff. I see they're making tables out of stop signs. You know, their prices are reasonable enough. 175 on the Michelob. I mean, that's what these things cost. 225 on the old Strohs is really a fair price these days. I'm curious what the plastic ones over there are running, but I have a feeling that they're about the same zone as they should be too. There's a small miller right here. Maybe we can find out by looking at it. This one is not priced. Hmm. Well, that happens. The pool table light is falling crooked. Let's see what they want for that. I can't really tell. 225, okay. 95 for who to pull. That's a good price for that, really. Old lion sign is $70. It's not enamel, but it's screen paint at some point. No, no, not true. It looks like it's decal, so it's going to be newer. See how that's done? So that's your move away from enamel signs. And that's definitely something to look for when you're buying old signs. That's why that one's $70 instead of several hundred. The orange Fenton basket with their discount is under $20 in the thumbprint pattern. And then there's Smurfs. Hefty and Papa, somebody painted out for us. And then these look like they're ceramic? Yes. $12.99 less 25%. I like this swag lamp. It was just fired on color. It was a cheap one. But it's good color. And it's the right shape. It's 30% off. And it's not for sale. Darn it. Why is it here if it's not for sale? You have to follow all the way into the booth to find out. You don't get to buy it. Wah, wah. Does not make me want to stay and really look at the rest of their stuff, but I do see this rooster, so I'm going to make an exception. Cookie jar was $26. This is American Bisque's foot. 26 minus 30% puts it in a different realm, though, if it's in good shape, which it seems to be, because at 30% off, nope, 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 we have a big crack right here. Okay, well, this dealer has some things not for sale and some not marked for condition, so I think I'm done with this dealer. It's football season. This game is only $15. Here's a Treasure Craft Spice cookie jar. Spice was the little black girl who looked just like the little white girl, other than the color of the hair and skin. It was one of the first times there had been both races represented simultaneously on essentially the same product. So that was definitely different. This is in the 1980s. This one is 60 after the discount, which seems to be about the going rate. And then this one is also Treasure Craft, the rooster. See, their rooster, obviously, 
look different in the late 80s than the rooster that you just saw in the other place. This is a late 80s piece. I'm not seeing the mark on this. It may have just had the paper label. Uh, there's the treasure craft mark under the lid. Maroon vinyl, wow. It's like cherry red. It looks comfortable too. $80, that actually wouldn't be bad just for the look of it. And then these bar stools are a knockoff of Umlauf, but I have the original Umlaufs for sale in St. Petersburg, so I think I'll be happy with that. Here's the West Virginia salt and pepper shaker. They did these for all 50 states. West Virginia's is the state and the piece of coal. Every state would have their shape and then there'd be some item that was supposed to represent the state that went with them. It was not Treasure Craft who did this, but it was based on their notion of having thematic sets rather than match sets that other companies came up with this. And these with the raised letters seem to be the earliest of those. I think they're really neat. You can collect all, I believe it was 48 states at the time that that was done. Eight dollars for that set might be worthwhile because of where I sell. These also might be worth buying at $8 because they're Ada clay. So this is pre-1955 Francoma in the Mayan Aztec pattern. And that's what would make those special. And then these are alligators, but I don't think I can double my money on those. I'll have to settle for the ones in the other case that we saw. Now these are Red Wing. These look like they go with the Tampico pattern, and there's a set of those. And those would be $8, so if you were collecting that pattern of dinnerware, I don't think those are actually that easy to get. These are 1930s cobalt glass, and these have the little sparkly eyes. So really, for their prices, they're pretty good. Some Blue Ridge and related patterns here. This is the Dixie Dogwood made by Joni. This is one of the Blue Ridge floral patterns, and it's got the nice back stamp. Blue Ridge China hand painted under glaze Southern Potteries Incorporated. And then this is Camark. It doesn't say so, but that is their numbering style. I don't see a mark on it, but I believe that is Camark. I agree with the dealer. It's all hand painted as well. Only $16. Eight bucks on the little green Hager bed vase. Here's a Hall China pitcher that's advertising for Shenley liquors, and that's unusual. The Red Wing piece is interesting because it's got the metal handles, about 1960 on that. And then this is Hager, and it's only $8. It's a nursery-related one, and I guess that may be not such a thing these days because people don't really think that storks deliver babies, but this guy is all ready to do it. And I guess you would have put your diaper pins in there, but he's just really kind of cute. And the sculpting is really deep. I like that he's got the goggles. I, I think I might just get that and give it a shot. It just seems really different for them. And then here's another one of these with the window box with the bird in it. This one's a McCoy. Glaze skips on the bottom, typical of McCoy. I don't personally do Ray Dunn stuff because it's newer than what I like to sell, but here's a piece for $12 out of the Artisan collection. I know some people do look for this stuff. Paws off, that's a big dog. One more room coming in here. And it looks like it's a lot of, well, it could be anything. We'll just take a look. Here's the Las Vegas clock. I just sold mine. Yes, these funny things sell. It looks like it does not have a battery holder, and that makes me a little bit nervous about it. An old welder. Looks like a lot of discount stuff in here, but also we have jewelry, so let's take a look at jewelry real quickly. It looks like a lot of gold tone costume and silver tone. I don't see a lot of stones. I mainly look for things with color. Yeah, I have to say, this kind of jewelry just all sort of looks the same to me. Batman meets Blockbuster coloring book. Some cards in here from G-Men. 1936, that's an old one. Ten dollars. Kodak signs do sell well because they're so graphically visible and because of the name. 
This one's priced at about 400. That might be a bit of a push for the condition that it is two sided and probably 1960s or 70s. Well, we're headed upstairs. You can see a really great peacock chenille, and that's a huge one, and that's why it's over 300, because you just don't see that size with that detail and complexity. Wow, so they have a whole bunch of really fancy chenille here. All sorts of peacock spreads. They've got great colors too, colors I've never seen before. Even with the fun ones I had this summer, I've never saw an orange one. The mint green is unusual. You can see the feathers. I can't take the time to pull all of these out, but wow, just so many of them. Chartreuse and pink, all the 50s colors. And then they've got some middle 20th century quilts and look at the one on the other side in the yellow that's really phenomenal too those are two of the best ones i've ever seen which is good because they lure you upstairs where i have to say i'm seeing not really the best stuff i've ever seen i'm seeing a lot of new a lot of reproduction a lot of things that look old and are not i know this is somewhat a tourist attraction as well so I think that you know they have a more of a variety that way but it means that I have to be careful as a buyer like what part of any of this is old Alexa find me an antique and then of course right as I say that we find one thing that really is old it's seven dollars it's candle wick it's the old five-part relish tray I know people are not collecting this like they used to, but this one's not the easiest one to find. Those little balls got chipped, the edges got chipped, and you don't see it with the dividers, and that's so inexpensive that I think I'm going to have to get it. Now we're going to the upstairs, and there are dealer spaces, but mainly there's classic cars, and this is going to be fun to show. First you have to get me past the showcases with merchandise. Don't go around hungry, says the lamp spending machine from the 1950s. Looks like some cute things in here. This booth seems to have a lot of ceramics. If you like horses, they've got them. If you like hull pottery, they've got that too. And I do. Royal Copley. Let's see what this orange horse says. It's Shawnee. The pony is $70. They've always been expensive. The orange really gets people. It's a great glaze color. This is Royal Hickman, who did the Royal Hager stuff, but this is when he was on his own. Interesting enough shape. Kind of a neutral color. Okay, this says Majolica. This is something somebody made at home. This is not old at all look at the glossy shiny bottom it doesn't have anywhere this should be 120 years old if it were real it's also a little too light and honestly maybe a little too well formed for a basic piece considering what they could do back then nyloke elephant great color 24 after the discount i like the Art Deco design on this, also a Nyloke piece, they say. I'm not entirely sure about that. I really am not thinking it's Nyloke. The color of the glaze and the numbering seems wrong, so I'll do a little research on that one. Here's Nyloke's early label when they showed a vessel, and this is a goose flower frog, $32. That's a pretty good price for that piece out of the Highwood line. This is just delightfully garish, don't you think? Rhinestones everywhere, rhinestones around the blowhole, and flowers, because, you know, a whale alone wouldn't be enough. That's Chrysan Company that made the psycho ceramics, and it makes perfect sense that they would have made something so delightfully garish. I do enjoy this. They love putting rhinestones on everything at that company. To me, that's one of the most fun Japanese makers for just that reason. But this is what makes this place fun, because there is a small collection of classic cars, 
down the middle of the row here. Some of these are going to be for sale. Some of these are hot rodded like this early 50s Chevy. This Camaro obviously has a gigantic engine that's been dropped in the middle of it. 89,500, but you know, this is the era of cars that are selling for a lot of money. Chevy's truck looks like it's pretty clean. This one's a little more of a scratch and dent right here. A 37 Dodge Huckster. Oh, well, Patrick, a trusty Huckster could restore this and drive around in it. I have never heard of a Dodge Huckster before, but it looks like some sort of a special truck body that was put on. This orange with black overpaint and rust is a Chevy Special Deluxe, and this one's going to really be a restoration project. And then there's Jeep, very similar to the one I had, except mine was blue. Not for sale, keep out. Aww. Here we've got an early 70s Cadillac. Is this early 70s or late 60s? They all looked about the same. You see the POW MIA sign from the Vietnam War, so it's right about in that time anyway. This is a mid-60s Chrysler Imperial. Imperial Crown. I believe that Imperial was its own make, actually, at that point, not technically a Chrysler. Gateway Antiques is their sister store. And then our last car is this big old 1951 Plymouth Cranbrook. I had a chance to sell one of these for an estate last year, but with people not being able to travel, it's been a little harder to sell the vintage cars out of private property. So I think we referred them on to a specific classic car dealer. Well, while I'm shopping in this Christmas wonderland, I should stop to say thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't. Please subscribe to my live channel as well. If you're interested in membership information, you can click the join button or you can look at the links in the description. There's a couple of different levels depending on what perks you want. You can get early access to bonus videos and first chance to shop on the level two. So take a look at all that. And in the meantime, let's go have more fun. You see this type all the time, but these, which are priced at 70, not so much. Boy, they sure have a lot of blow molds. Mickey and Minnie, candy canes, religious, Santa, you name it. Speaking of Santa, here's a big plastic Santa head. This looks like it's something from the 60s, I would say or 70s. It's got a lot of cracks. It would depend on the price whether it would be worth getting and it does not have a tag so I'm going to just put it back and assume it's going to be for them for decoration. A lot of the spaces up here are sort of a hodgepodge of things. And again, age, well it varies, but we do have some paint by number, some, some fairly famous canines. We have Lassie here for $18 and Rin Tin Tin, the German Shepherd over here, I'm sure will be the same price, yes. Those might be fun to frame. If you're a dog lover and a paint by number lover, it's the perfect combination. The decanter set in here is something we see from the 1970s. This one is supposed to look like a, an old steam engine train. Priced at $40 now. Those were the types of things they advertised in the back of the men's magazines back in the day. And this is Kohutta Auction, which takes place in the upstairs in the back of this store. So the next one will be Saturday, November 27th, which is tomorrow. I will not be able to stay for it. But I imagine this is where the real action is. A lot of these older antique malls have been taking spaces and turning them into auction houses in order to stimulate business and fill space and also produce turnover of merchandise for their dealers and their customers. It's probably a pretty good idea if it's executed well. This Honda dirt bike just sold while I was here. In fact, it looks like they sold all three of them. 
I did a big appraisal on motorcycles once it's an entire world of its own. Well, here's Franciscan's ivy pattern. A favorite of Lucille Ball on I Love Lucy and of Jeffrey at Real Nifty Vintage. I believe he has all of this stuff though. And they have it priced at old school prices, so it'll have to stay. These vintage tube cases are not to be overlooked because sometimes they have the tubes in them and sometimes the tubes are of value. This one's priced at 55 For just the case, that's about right. So let's see if it has any of its contents. No. Okay. So they've priced it for the case, which is perfectly fine. But that's what we're looking for is to see if there's tubes, particularly old radio tubes. There's tons that are common, but there's a few that are very specialized and you can't really make them run without them. And those are worth money. I always like these little carts, especially with the fold down edges because they're useful for display, but it's $80, which is more than I get for them. Pub room, this is a 70s era sign trying to look Victorian. $25 with the discount. The classic Heineken clog, which I actually haven't had for a while, they have priced at $20, which would be $10. Probably worth buying and trying to sell for $20. If you're not sure where your mom's Tupperware went, well, it might have gone here because there is an entire space full of old Tupperware. Lots of fun colors. You can tell the 70s tones here from the 1980s colors down there. And then, gosh, what else is back in here? Well, we've got glassware in here, 20% off anything. Unfortunately, this guy's had his tail broken and polished down. That's why it's so stubby. Do not be fooled. They should have a nice long tail. I believe the horses are Ellie Smith. Yes. Amberina is a little harder color to find those in. $60 with the discount. Again, some of these prices are perfectly fine if you're collecting. I don't see much that I can buy for resale. Here's the old blue depression glass that you rarely see in the Mayfair pattern. And at one time that would have gone for $135. I don't think it goes for that much now though. Aha, uh -huh, I think I finally found another thing to buy. This is a cocktail shaker we see pretty often. It's got Parisian scenes and the mime and the Arc de Triomphe and all that good stuff. It's from about 1960. The top looks good and it's got the stopper. That is the most important part and it's only $10. I think it's just lingered here amongst a bunch of bottles and things and was overlooked. So I think I found myself something else. And if you like 1970s Pyrex, they seem to have about every color scheme and pattern from wheat to gooseberry to the Americana to the Falls Graph. It's all here. What I really like here is the freeze pack freezer supplies rack. This would come apart. It would be great for shows. I stopped taking my Canada dry rack around because it had been to a bunch of shows, but I could sure do this be great for outdoors and I do have some outdoor shows in the Florida season. This little teapot just says USA but it is actually a McCoy. And they've got a bunch of salt and pepper shakers as well. This pair here is Pottery Craft from the 1970s with S and P in the stoneware. I'm Salt Miami, I'm Pepper Miami. Obviously Miami was added later as a souvenir item. And these have the plastic stoppers. They're $15, but they put the tag right on the red paint, which will take it off. So that's a shame that they ruined it like that. These cute little dogs from the 1930s are marked made in Japan. And these look like the RCA Nipper. And they look like the original ones. These have been reproduced, but these look like the real ones. That's why they're priced at 35 At one time, I drove from Colorado to Seattle with this scale sitting next to me in the front of my Jeep and a pair of skis over my shoulder. It was quite a long ride. There's a tree I've never seen before. 
that's a very clever way of putting that together. I guess you could do that with an old mannequin and lots of old things on your own rather than buying new. Well, I won't lie and say I found anything really amazing, but I found some cute stuff at Grumpy's. I found a few good things along the way. It's nice to have some new places to stop on this trip, and I'll check them out again at some point in the future. In the meantime, check me out on the social media listed below. Click the links in the description to play around with the various stuff I have going, from appraisals to my live show website and all that good stuff. And we'll talk to you later from somewhere else in the antique and vintage world. Bye for now. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at The Antique Nomad. Bye for now!